All right, let's talk about it, guys. It's the elephant in the room. It is Donald Trump in 2024. So Michael Wolff is out with a, a brand new book. You may have uh, seen him on CNN the other day when he was uh, vilifying <laughs> Brian Stelter for being part of the sanctimonious problem. If you need a reminder of this, this is Michael Wolff making fun of uh, Brian Stelter as part of the sanctimonious media. <laughs> You're cracking me up. <laughs> One of my favorite clips ever. Anyway, Michael Wolf is out with a new, uh, new New York Times opinion piece explaining why he is absolutely convinced that Donald Trump will run again for president in 2024. So here's what Wolf writes in the New York Times. He says, um, he says that for Democrats who seem exiled to Mar-a-Lago, stripped of his key social media platforms and facing determined prosecutors, his future may seem reasonable, if not pathetic. But this is Donald Trump, always ready to strike back harder than he has been struck to blame anyone but himself to silence any doubts with the sound of his own voice, to take what he believes in his, and most of all, to, the see, uh, to seize all available attention. We should sound the alarm. We should sound the alarm. And no way, no way is he out of this. So we've been saying this for months on this show. Get ready for Trump to run again in 2024. And I'll even take it a step further. He will likely win. Now, I was one of the few when I was back on uh, Fox back in 20, uh, in 2020. Um, I'm sorry, in uh, you know, what year is it? Yeah, back in 2016. Um, I said, you know, at this, I cannot see any Republican unseating him when he just, just destroyed Jeb Bush on stage. You know, why, why do you support this, this awful war in Iraq? Your brother, just because your brother voted for it, why can't you stand up here and say that you're against it? And then Jeb Bush, like cowardly, cowardly, you know, said he, he he did support the Iraq war. And then a few weeks later, he comes back and says he doesn't support it. Of course, he inevitably lost. No one could stand up to him. He sucked all of the air out of the room, did Donald Trump. Now, I think he's an absolute narcissist. He's an egomaniac. And he's horrible for this country. But I absolutely think he is on path right now to actually win this. A couple of key data points that I want to point out to you. Number one, just at the top, is Joe Biden. And as I mentioned earlier in the show, we've had literally a list of things that have not been accomplished now in, you know, in, in Congress, right? Uh, Democrats have been begging for you to vote for them. Elect us and you'll get your $2,000 stimulus checks next week. Elect us and we'll pass gun reform legislation. You know, elect us and we'll fix our broken voting system. Elect us and we'll, you know, uh, we'll fix our, uh, our infrastructure. Um, elect us and we'll have an appropriations bill. Elect us and we will have a, a, a gun control bill, uh, voting rights bill, budget resolution, police reform. None of it's happened. None of it. Joe Biden's approval rating simply hasn't moved in six months. This is fresh new polling data. Hasn't done anything. And of course, we see the economic inequality that's all over the country. News stories out this morning about income inequality and how the wealth has been generated at the top of the, the pile for, uh, for wealthy Americans. It, trillions of dollars have been raised and brought into the economy, and it's all concentrated at the top. 25% increase in wealth at the top, while the bottom, a small uptick, just a tiny increase. And so you have the presidency, you have the Senate, you have the House of Representatives, and nothing has happened yet. Very little. We had one, we had one uh, stimulus package pass uh, back in, in, in March. And yet we are a few days away from people losing their homes in a massive ev uh, eviction crisis. And on September 30th, which we'll get to in just a few moments, we of course have the mortgage moratorium uh, forbearance program, which is going to run out. So massive economic inequality across the United States. I mean, I'll just ask you, anybody watching right now, do you feel like you are better off today than you were six months ago? And look, I know six months is not a long time, okay, from a pandemic. So I will cut an administration some slack on this. All I'm saying is that unless something really starts to move, in a direction of positivity for, for Democrats to show that actual work is getting done, student loan forgiveness, uh, you know, trying to close this income inequality wealth gap in the United States, trying to provide for children early, you know, early at childhood education, infrastructure, all of these pieces, you're basically providing an absolute layup on a table for Donald Trump to run again in 2024. 
Just look in the chat. No, Patricia says, no, not really. Lisa Pettit says Biden won't run again. Well, and that's the major problem with Kamala Harris, too. She has not exactly ignited a progressive base. And is Kamala Harris the real answer to Donald Trump? See, there's a number of things that are in Donald Trump's favor right now. Number one being income inequality, right? Uh, never mind the fact that dispropor it grew exponentially under President Trump. But that's okay, because he can ride back in and say, let me finish the job. I had a pandemic in my way. Let me finish the job. He can point to violence in major cities and he can say, look at these liberals running these cities and all the violence. And he'd be right. He'd be right about that to look at all the violence, the explosion of gun violence across the United States. Now, would he do anything about gun reform? No, of course not. But he can point to liberal policies in these big cities. I'm not saying he's right. All I'm saying is what he will say and it will work because you will have millions of people who are just absolutely at wit's end with the system as it is. I mean, just look at the violence here. Steve Keeley is a friend of mine in Philadelphia, um, a reporter that I used to work with, uh, a really good reporter. Uh, he's a funny guy, by the way. But unfortunately, and I follow him on Twitter, and I go through his Twitter feed, and you know, he's a he's a he's a really good reporter in Philadelphia for Fox Twenty Nine. I mean, thirty-two year old woman hit on a sidewalk twice, just died. Um. Man, stolen driving, uh, stolen car, roaming the streets. Um, hit woman twice on the streets. Um, everything on his feed here is five people dead overnight from gun violence. Every night he has, it's just back to back to back stories about violence. He's covered like every night. Just in, Berks County man, 29, for shot for, for road rage. 44 year old steals an oil tanker truck. Several pursuits with different law enforcement. It just goes through and through and through all of the homicide shootings he covers on a regular basis. Breaking it, confirmed three people dead in a row home. Gunshots, 32, on and on. Four shot, three killed in Wilmington. I mean, this is, look at this, 10-year-old girl. Not vanished since uh, Friday night. More violence, more violence, more violence. Or violence. And so we're supposed to be fixing this right across the United States. And you have these cities that are seeing a surge and President Trump can ride in and say, he, you know, here's the problem. It's these liberal mayors. It's these liberal governors. It's these liberal, uh, you know, policies uh, that are causing this violence. Is it true? Doesn't matter, right? When he controls the airwaves, which brings me to my next point, when President Trump controls ratings, and you have all of these networks who are in the toilet right now, CNN, MSNBC, all of them are starving for somebody like Trump to come back. And guess what? They will allow it. They will allow it because it will drive ratings crazy for these, for these networks. And these billionaire corporations will make so much money off of having Trump running again that they will they will push him they will push him and they will then put on you know anchors on their air to fact check him and say what a crazy person he is but they will eat it up you know governor mike huckabee told me uh, a number of years ago when he was running for president he said he said i you know i can't compete he said you know every story is about trump and if i want to try to get on the air to tell my side of the story or to to, to talk about policy i can't compete with it he sucks all of the oxygen off of the television. It's the truth. And so no Republican right now is even close to being able to compete with him. Ron DeSantis, I mean, he gets trounced in, a, in, 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 you know, in these early polls up against President Trump. The next most popular Republican right now is Donald Trump Jr. Want that guy? So this is what's, this is what's shaping up right now. Ron DeSantis... Donald Trump or Donald Trump Jr. So if Trump wants it, if he is healthy enough, if he thinks he he would not he would love nothing more than to say I told you so and try to ride back in on some white horse. So get ready folks. I mean, you know, as Michael Wolf says, like get ready to sound the alarm. It's it's coming. You heard it right here. Okay, I'm I'm not saying I'm right. I'm not saying that I I'm I'm happy that I'm right. <laughs> I'm just saying I'm I'm putting I'm making this prediction. What do you guys think in the chat? Do you think I'm right? Or is this, be, you, you don't want to admit it because it's too painful to think of. 
Like, I don't want to think of this guy in the White House again. But when they're, yeah, as Ashley says, you know, there are desperate people. They do desperate things. Wolf Clan says, if Trump wins in 2024, then no proof is needed about how the USA, <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's the thing, like, you're, you're talking about, like, all the violence in these cities, like, you know, for $750 billion, we could eliminate almost all of the need for for crime just by taking yeah. care of everybody. You know, but hey, China and Russia. Yeah, we can't spend any of it, but we, you know, look, just like Steve Keeley says, another teenager shot city of Philadelphia on a basketball court in a recreation center. Just shot playing basketball. Repeated violence. Like, who's a kid that wants to go out and actually get some exercise and is not involved in drug crime, not doing anything but out there playing basketball, just gets shot. The year to date, look at this. I mean, homicide victims in Philly up 31% over last year. 315 this year so far. That's just of a few days ago. 31%. You know, you can't, but you can't, we can't help people in the United States, but we can quickly approve $25 billion so the military can focus on nuclear weapons. America, the greatest country in the world. Thanks for subscribing to the channel. You can also become a channel member by going to morninginvest.com slash join, where you can stick it to the mainstream media and support independent journalism. We're able to bring you the stories that you won't see on any of the major billionaire-backed networks. Thanks so much. We'll see you next time, everyone.